Welcome to all who are visiting tonight. We trust the Lord will manifest his word to you as he's manifested his presence here in our worship. We thank God for his presence all the time. Amen. Just a little more here. Okay. Don't forget our services Tuesday night, Wednesday or Thursday, our intercessory prayer meeting nights, and then Friday night Bible school. Keep those services all in mind. Would you turn to Psalm 89, please? Psalm 89. Eighty-ninth Psalm. I want to read one verse before we proceed. <clears throat> verse 34, please. My message tonight, taking hold of the covenant, ho taking hold of the new covenant, taking hold of the new covenant. <clears throat> verse 34, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. We're going to talk about a subject that uh, many of you have never even heard a single message about, other maybe than from this pulpit. Let me ask, how many of you have heard, other than from this pulpit, how many of you have ever heard one full message on the new covenant? Would you raise your hand, please? Amazing, just a smattering of hands here tonight, just a few who have heard about the covenant. <clears throat> That's why it's so very, very important that we deal with it more and more. We trust that the Lord will begin to open our eyes. When I was just a young preacher, uh, I don't even know how old I was, but the Lord in prayer one day led me to the 25th Psalm. And he, he said, I'm going to make this the theme of your life. And he gave me the very verses. I'll just read them to you. Don't turn there. This is from Psalm 25, verses 12 to 14. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease. His seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. He will show them his covenant. Now, this is a promise for every single believer that fears the Lord, that trusts in him fully. God says, I'm going to show you the covenant. Now, that means that you have to believe that, and you have to claim it, and you have to press into it. But we're going to see tonight a glimpse, just one view, another view of what the new covenant means. Heavenly Father, I pray for the Holy Spirit to come down upon this house from the balcony to the choir, to everyone listening to me, and those who will hear this message on tape or video. Lord Jesus, you're trying to open to the body of Jesus Christ in these last days truths that will set us free, that will keep us from the wicked one in the time of storm. When the enemy comes in like a flood in the last final hour of this time, Lord Jesus, I pray your Holy Spirit quicken us now. We have got to pray, Lord, for an opening of our understanding that we may see and that we may hear. Lord, we're not interested in preaching a sermon tonight. We're interested in you opening your heart and your mind to us and giving us the revelation that we need in these last days, that you will put in our hands the truth that truly changes our lives and sets us free. O oh, Holy Spirit of living God, quicken me to speak this and quicken our ears to hear it, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, now this promise has been made to all believers that if you fear the Lord, God says, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And this has been a secret that's been hidden for many, many years from the body of Jesus Christ. I tell you, in all my years, I have not heard a full message. I've heard it mentioned. I've never heard a full message on the meaning of the new covenant. Now, I know there's been some talk about the old covenant. And in fact, if you get into that, you get into one covenant after another, covenant after covenant after covenant throughout the Old Testament. And, and I have never yet heard anybody who can fully explain all these covenants to me. But God said he was going to make a new covenant for the last days people. And, and I have not heard that. Now, when I was a young preacher, I'm trying to figure out why this has not been taught. 
When I was a young preacher, I, I was more or less led to believe that uh, covenant theology uh, was a theology of a number of old dead Scottish churches and that it produced a permissive lifestyle. Because you see, when you understand the glory of the covenant and what God agreed to with Christ, it's so glorious, it's so life freeing that many people take advantage of it and have in the past, and, and they have uh, misused the covenant. Another reason why the theology of the covenant or the teaching of the covenant has not been revealed to the church in the last days is because the scripture says that God said, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And so what dispensationalists have said, well, Israel is Israel, Jew is a Jew, Jerusalem is Jerusalem, it's natural. And so they have assigned it into the millennial age saying that this is for the Jews. And so it's been neglected because we've said Israel, they've, they've said Israel is Israel, Jew is Jew, and is, is, Jerusalem is Jerusalem. It's natural, it's, you can fly there, you can go there, so it's just been put aside. They said it's not for us. And folks, I'm telling you now, and listen to what the pastor is saying tonight. This is going to be the one truth that God opens up in the last days because it's going to be the most freeing truth. It's been neglected. It has not been sought out because theologians have told us it is not for us. It's for the Jew or that it's in the past and it has nothing to do with us today. It's amazing that Paul can teach so much about the new covenant and be totally ignored by the church. I saw this when I was just a young man and I've been seeking and praying about it and it's only lately the Lord's seen fit to open just a few views into this and I've told God I'll not let go of this. I, I spent all my time praying for the revelation of this new covenant because I believe it's the secret of waking up the last day church. I believe it releases such power and if the devil, the Bible says, is going to come down to us in the last days having great wrath, knowing his time is short, and he's going to send a flood against the church, against, against this woman, the church, how much more do you and I have to have the secret of the Lord in our hands, how to overcome? And, and, and the power and the glory of the new covenant has to be released in our spirits, in our minds. It has to come. And I told God, I will not let him go. I'm not going to let him go until he shows and unveils this new covenant. And I believe there are going to be many others. I see God revealing this to Pastor Carter in a very clear way. You're going to see others who are praying and seeking God. Now, I know that the prosperity people are going to come and they're going to try to abuse it and carry it off and, and carry it off into some extreme. But let that be what it may. God will not let this truth be hidden much longer because this is the last day and this truth is going to come forth. Now let me show to you, I want to prove to you that this covenant belongs to you and me. Now the only reason, the only way you can lay hold of the covenant, the new covenant, is to be absolutely persuaded that is meant for you and me today. That it's not for some Jewish nation, it's not for natural Israel or natural Jerusalem and the natural Jew, it is for spiritual Israel. Amen. There are two Israels, there are two kinds of Jews, there are two kinds of Jerusalems. We're going to go right into it. Now, Israel's first mention is found in Genesis 32, 28. It was a name God gave to Jacob by faith. It was his regenerate name. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. That name was given to him only after his spirit, his carnal spirit was broken. He was given the name Israel as his faith name and represented all the seed of faith, all the children that would come to God by faith through Abraham and his seed and this now through Jacob and his seed. <clears throat> Truly God, the Bible says, is good to Israel even to such as I have a clean heart. He says God is good to Israel those who have a clean heart. Now, he distinguishes Israel as those who have a clean heart. The natural Jew at the time had no clean heart because the blood had not been sprinkled on them. It is only those, no heart can be clean other than through the sprinkling of the blood. So he's distinguishing between his two Israels immediately. Romans 9, 6, 
not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, but they are not all Israel which are of Israel. In other words, natural Israel is not just Israel. There is an Israel, according to Galatians 6, 16, the Israel of God. Galatians 3, 7. Know you therefore that they which are of faith, they are the sons of Abraham, not the natural Jew, but the spiritual Jew by faith who is in Jesus Christ is the seed of Abraham. The spiritual seed of Abraham. Romans 9, 8. They which are the children of the flesh, they're not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Yes. Nothing could be clear in all scripture. Galatians 4, 25 and 6. This Agar is Sinai in Arabia and answers to Jerusalem, which now is. He said, there is a natural Israel. There's a natural Jerusalem. He said, which now is, is in bondage with all her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free and is the mother of us all. He said, there's two Jerusalems, uh, two Israels, one natural and one spiritual. Revelation 2, 28, <clears throat> or Romans 2, 28. For he's not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew who is one inwardly. And circumcision is that which is of the heart and in the spirit and not of the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Amen. Now the new covenant is for spiritual Israel, all Jews and all Gentiles who have put their trust and faith in Jesus Christ. If you're in Christ, you are the new Jew, you are the new Israel, and you are born again in the new Jerusalem. Amen. Hebrews 8, 6, but now, now, in the new covenant, he has obtained a more excellent ministry. He's a mediator of a better covenant. Now, folks, when Jeremiah gave the announcement of the new covenant was going to come to the new, the new Israel, the natural Israel was divided into two groups at the time. They had two different kings, two different centers of worship, and they were enmity with each other. So this could not have been to the natural Jew. They were in no position. They didn't have the clean heart. They didn't have the hunger for God. They were backslidden. They were in idolatry. <clears throat> they were two different groups. They were mixed up. They were enemies at enmity with God and with each other. So it was no possibility could be given under Jeremiah's first announcement of the new covenant could have been to the natural Jew. <clears throat> now, who are, who are the parties? Remember, a covenant is agreement between two parties and what is to be done and what is not to be done. And we would call it a contract. And once this contract <clears throat> has been finalized, it had penalties by the law if one party did not fulfill the terms of the covenant. Now, there are terms made by each party. Now, who are these parties? The Bible says <clears throat> that God made a new covenant. Now he said with Israel and Judah, but Israel and Judah, the spiritual Israel that you and me in Christ were brought into it later. <clears throat> we we're brought into it because we we're brought into Christ. But the two parties of this covenant is God the Father and God the Son. Now listen to me closely. Before the earth was begun, before the world existed, before time itself, <clears throat> the Heavenly Father and His Son. Now remember Jesus the Son of God, though he was not in flesh, <clears throat> in the bosom of his Father, created all things. <clears throat> all things were created by him and for him. Now, <clears throat> in eternity, God the Father, God the Son, realizing that the first Adam was going to fail, he's going to bring reproach. <clears throat> God said, I will not lose this generation that I created. I will not lose mankind. I will not let him go. I will not let this fail. And in time before it was all, any, the world was created, there was an agreement. There was a covenant made between God the Father and God the Son that there would be a redemption made, that there would be a sacrifice made. God said to his son, if you will go and be 
the slain redeemer, the lamb of the father. <clears throat> I make a covenant with you. And this covenant, this agreement was made not in private, but every word of this covenant, all the conversation of this covenant has been revealed in the word. God wanted us to know every detail, all the terms of the covenant made because he wanted us to rejoice in its security. I'm going to show it to you in just a few moments. These terms were not made in secret. <clears throat> now I want you to follow me very, very close if you will. All the contracting and all the conversation of this covenant between God and His Son, <clears throat> all the terms of the covenant were openly recorded and they are here in the Word. The Spirit of the Lord, when He inspired this, made sure that every word that was spoken on that covenant time was made between the Father and His Son, <clears throat> was fully recorded so we know the details. Let me give you an example of covenant conversation between the Father and His Son recorded in the Scripture. Don't go there, but Psalm 89, 19. <clears throat> then thou spakest in vision to thy Holy One, and said, I've laid help on one that is mighty. I've exalted one chosen out of the people. This is the Father speaking in covenant to His Son. He, he is saying to His Son, Now, Son, <coughs> this seems like a mystery, but I'm going to ask of you to go into the world, and I'm going to send you to people who, will become, who have become by sin weak and miserable, hopeless and overwhelmed, and they will be unable to find their way back to me, and they will be lost. They will absolutely be lost. I must have you go. He said, I've appointed you, and I've laid help upon your shoulder, and I've made you mighty for the purpose. This is God, what he's saying there. I have laid help on one who is mighty. I've exalted and chosen one out of the people. He said, I have chosen you, my son. I want you to go on my behalf. I, this is an agreement the Father is making, and he's spelling out the terms of his going, and then Christ will spell out the terms of his accepting it, and you'll see it all. It's, it, it becomes very, very clear as we go on. Now, the purpose of God in making a covenant with his own son was to recover lost humanity from the power of the devil. This was God's rescue plan out of the very clutches of Satan, and it was done absolutely in divine love. For God was not willing that a single one should perish. It came out of the heart of God's heart of love. Now, when, when God said that, and he set out the terms, he said, you're going to go, but I'm going to lay help on you. I'm going to make you mighty. You're going to be called the mighty one. And Jesus answers back in so many words, Father, you've laid help on me, on my shoulders. You've sent me to rescue the imprisoned, heal the hurting, break satanic strongholds <clears throat> to reconcile creation back to you. And here, in his own words recorded, is his acceptance of this term of his Father. Listen to it. This is Jesus accepting the terms of the covenant. Lo, he's speaking to his Father, I come. In the volume of the book, it's written of me, I delight to do thy will, O my God. That's Jesus saying, Father, I accept the help you lay on me, I accept your might and your power. I'm going to need it for what you've sent me to do. So I've come now to submit myself. I've come now to do your will. Jesus said, my meat will now be to do your will and to finish your work. And everything Jesus did on this earth, he did it as fulfillment of the terms of the covenant. Every healing, every bit of good that he did, every word that he spoke of divine life, everything he received of his Father, it was given to him before time was created. Every word was spoken to him when he said, I, I do it, my Father, only what I see and hear from my Father. He saw it and heard it before he ever came. This commandment I've received of my Father, that I should lay down my life. <clears throat> he said that was one of the terms. When I go, I'm going to have to lay down my life. And I agreed. John 12, 49. For I've not spoken to myself, but the Father has sent me, who sent me. He gave me these commandments, what I should say and what I should speak. 
when the covenant was made, when it was cut, the Lord told him, <coughs> laid out his whole ministry before him. <coughs> the word of God clearly states that the terms of the covenant and all of the requirements were laid out. And here are some of the requirements. It's all recorded in the scripture. First of all, God said the term of the covenant on his part was he was to divest himself of all of his glory. He was to strip himself of all the appearance of his Godhead. He had to strip himself of all godness. Scripture says then, another term, he was take on a human body. And then Jesus answered, a body have you prepared for me? He said, I agree to the terms. He said, you'll be born of a woman. Jesus, it, it is written of him, and God sent forth his son made of a woman. He was to take on the form of a servant. He was to be holy, harmless, undefiled. He was to endure great sufferings. He was to endure reproaches, injustices. He, the father said, part of the term of the covenant, you'll be termed a man of sorrows. You'll be acquainted with much grief. He was to grow up in the presence of his heavenly father without any former comeliness. He said, I'm, the father said, I'm going to have to watch you grow up, even from childhood, as an undesirable. He shall grow up before him. Before whom? Before his father. He shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground, having no form and no comeliness. And then part of the term was also this, and after all this, you're to humble yourself you're going to be placed in the hands of wicked men. And in great agony, you're going to lay down your life as an offering. I'm going to lay the sins of the whole world upon you, my son. He said, this is the term. Then the father says, your ministry is going to be one, first of all, of a priest. You're going to have to carry this <clears throat> seed of yours all through time and bring them into eternity. He said, I'm going to make you a shepherd. You're going to go under many ministries, but your main ministry is going to be a shepherd. <clears throat> and then he handed him a list of names. He said, these are the names. This is your flock that I have known from the foundation of the world. <clears throat> I, even in the womb, I will number their members, even in the womb. <clears throat> I will count every hair. He said, I want you to be a shepherd. And if one of them ever goes astray, I want you to take him in, their, in your arms, into your bosom and bring him back. You're going to go as a shepherd. You're going to lead him beside still waters. You're going to restore their soul. You're going to cause them to have all the green pastures they need. You're going to comfort them. No wonder... The scripture said he called his sheep by, his, by their own names. He knew their names. John 6, 37, all that the Father given me, they're going to come to me. And they shall come to me. They that come to me, I will no wise cast out. Because I came down from heaven, not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. <clears throat> the Father said, if you go for me, If you cut this covenant with me to go and seek my lost, here's a list of what I'm going to require of you. Here are the terms. You're going to have to preach tidings, good tidings to the meek. You're going to bind up the brokenhearted. You're going to proclaim liberty to the captives. You're going to open prison doors to those that are bound. You're going to bear with the weaknesses of the frail. You're not going to break any bruised reeds. You're not going to quench any smoked flax. But you're going to tenderly deal with ignorance. You're going to supply all the shortcomings with your strength. You're going to feed the flock. You'll gather the lambs. You'll gently lead the young. You'll give your strength to those who are weak. You'll guide them with your counsel. And you will promise to send them the Holy Spirit to take them on when you leave. You will cherish them. You'll protect them. And then you'll bring them home to glory with you. Now God says, if you will do that, my son, let me tell you what I covenant to do with you. 
and for you. And these are all clearly revealed in the scripture. Nothing is hidden. The father says to his son, if you will go, first of all, you'll have the Holy Spirit without measure. And that's exactly what God did. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus said, for God giveth not the Son, giveth the, not the Spirit by measure unto him. God did not give the Spirit by measure. He didn't get it in drips and dribbles. He didn't get a drop of the Spirit here and there. Now you and I received the Holy Ghost in measure. <clears throat> but he said, if you'll go, I will empower you with my Spirit. You will have the Holy Spirit on you every hour. You will not go in your own strength. You will go in the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You remember the moment the dove came and settled upon him. This is my beloved son. The Holy Spirit was upon him. He did all his works through the power of the Spirit, unlimited in the Spirit. Secondly, if you go, you will never be out of my sight. My presence will be with you everywhere you go. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son, Hebrew 1, 5. He said, I'm a father to you, and you know that not even an earthly father that is an honest man would ever give up on his son, would always be there to help him. If he asked bread, he would not get a stone. If he asked fish, he'd not get a serpent. I'll be a father to you. You'll be my son. Thirdly, I will lift you up in all your times of opposition and discouragement. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he has set judgment in the earth. God said every time the enemy comes in and you're discouraged, I will be there and by my spirit, I will lift that off of you. And I will encourage you by my spirit every time you need it. Then he said, I will highly honor you and give you a name above all the other names on earth, heaven or earth. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. And then he said, son, after all of this, and you have fulfilled all the terms of the covenant on your part, then I will bring you back to glory in victory and power and anointing. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter then into glory, the scripture says. There it is. It's all written. It's all out there in black and white for us to see. Now, Jesus gladly accepted the terms of his father's covenant. He agreed to fulfill the demands and the terms to become a, a sacrifice with his own body. Scripture said he made of himself no reputation. He took upon himself the form of a servant. And he was made in the likeness of man. And Jesus himself, answering the Father, he said, I was not rebellious, Father, neither turned away my back. I gave my back to the smiters. I gave my cheeks to them that plucked off my hair. I hid not my face from shame and all the spitting. He said, they spat on me, I gave my back, but I knew this was the term of the covenant. And I was willing to fulfill it because there's a plan. I do this for a reason. I know, Father, your love for your children. And you sent me to save your children. You sent me to keep your children. And I share that love because I share the spirit of Almighty God. He was not doing this for his own good. It's for the seed, for his children. Now think back of everything Jesus did. Of every person he healed of opening the prison doors of death and pe raising people right out of the grave like Lazarus. All the miracles, all the healings, everything he did, he was fulfilling the terms of the covenant. These were the things that God sent him to do. He was not doing them on his own. He said, Father, I'm doing exactly. We agreed way back before the world was created. We agreed that I would do this. I am doing it. He went about doing good, which was keeping the covenant. Yes. He was keeping the terms of the everlasting agreement, the contract they made in eternity. In hope of, it, you say, I can't accept that, that this covenant was made before time. Listen to what the scripture says. In hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, 
promised before the world began. And that word promised there is covenanted. He covenanted before the world began. 2 Timothy 1.9, according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. The covenant being fulfilled in Christ Jesus before the world began. Hallelujah. You see Jesus going after the last sheep, taking his arm, bringing it back. That's what the Father told him he would do in covenant. He's just fulfilling the covenant. Hallelujah. And you, you see him all through his ministry appropriating the promises God made to him. Remember what Jesus said, and my God shall be my strength. I will put my trust in him. Hebrews 2.13, Jesus said, I put my trust in him. He made a covenant with me and it's settled, it's eternal. My father can't lie. He's my strength. I appropriate it. So what's that have to do with you and me? It's all about the love of God for his people and for the lost. The covenant that was cut <clears throat> was because God said he's not willing that any should perish. Now you see, God gives his son and the son gives his life and we get all the benefits. God said, I give you my son. The son says, I give you my life. And why? That you and I may have all the benefits. By mutual consent, this covenant was made to keep and preserve the seed of Christ, his children. I want you to see that in Psalms 89. Are you still in Psalm 89? Start with me at verse 26. This is Jesus speaking to the Father. I told you it's all in the Word. It wasn't hidden. His contact wasn't made in secret. Verse 26, he shall cry unto me, thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And here's the father saying, and I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. The father speaking to his son now. My mercy will I keep for him forever more, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed. Now who's the seed? The spiritual Israel. You and I are the seed. Folks, get this. Ask God to hold, help you understand it. This is for you and it's for me. And it's so glorious, it's mind-boggling. We can scarce conceive it. His seed also will I make to endure forever. And his throne is the days of heaven. And if his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments... If they break my statutes and keep my commandments, I will visit their transgression with rod and their iniquity with stripes and send them to hell. <clears throat> What's he going to do with his sinning body, his sinning children, those who transgress, those who grieve him? What is he going to do? Read the next verse. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I, utter, will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer or allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break. I will not alter the thing that's gone out of my lips. I will not lie to David, the David there is Christ. I will not lie to my son. I made a covenant with my son to keep him, and by faith you're in him, and every promise I've made to my son is yours. Hallelujah. If you're in Christ by faith, you're his seed. The pledge the father made to his son is if you go, my son, I'll be faithful to you and I'll be faithful to all your children, your seed. And I covenant with you, my son, to keep and preserve them just as I've kept and preserved you. My faithfulness that I've shown you, I will show them. I swear to cause your children to endure. I will keep them from falling. I cannot lie. Remember what Jesus, remember the pledge the Father made to his son in Isaiah 42, 6. Don't turn, let me read it to you. I, the Lord, 
have called thee in righteousness, I will hold thy hand, I will keep thee, and I will give thee for covenant to the people and for the light to the Gentiles. The Lord said to his son, if you go, there'll never be a time that my hand is not in yours. There'll never be a time that you're away from my keeping power. I will keep you from the power of the devil, the power of the enemy. I will keep you. I will be faithful to this promise. Faith in Christ brings us into this blessing of the covenant. All these blessings of covenant. The Bible said, for as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that body, of that one body, being many, they're still one body. So is Christ. In other words, you, you look at me, I'm one body, but I've got fingers. There's, I've got 10 members right there. I've got two members here, I got two members here, I got two members here, I got ten toes, ten members there, I got eyes, two members here, I've got two members here, all members of one body. Folks, in Christ Jesus, though we be many, we are one body. One body. One Israel. Jesus was the one Jew. And in this one Jew, he brought the Gentiles, he brought all nationalities, everybody into himself. And in eternity, he coveted with the Father. Father, you will deal with me as one man. I will bring all humanity that trust in me to you, but we will be one man. Everything you promised me, I claim in covenant for them. He said, these are my terms, my blood. Sanctifies, purifies, and wipes out all the claims of the devil, now and forever. John 17, you find the greatest covenant conversation God and the Father made. And it's amazing that God allowed us to hear it and share it. Jesus is praying covenant to his Father. In John 17, we hear the Lord's last prayer before he leaves this earth. He's already fulfilled all the terms of the covenant now. He's about to go to the cross. And now he's taking on his mediatorship. And the mediatorship of Christ has to do with covenant. He mediates the covenant to make sure that Father's reminded that he has fulfilled all the terms. And then to come and remind you and me that we have every right to come and lay hold of his covenant. He mediates the covenant to us as well as interceding for our sins. John 17, 1. Go to John, would you please? 17th chapter. This is all covenant. And you know what Jesus is doing? He, he's going back into eternity. And he's reminding the Father of that time they cut the covenant. It's amazing. When the Holy Ghost is going to open this... I just got up and walked around my house weeping and rejoicing. I said, oh God, I've carried such useless burdens all these years. I've carried such helpless guilt and fear and condemnation. Lord, I'm so ashamed of that. God, help me to come into the covenant. 17.1, these words spake Jesus, lifted his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son that thy son may also glorify thee. Remember when the terms of the covenant... You come and then I will bring you back to glory. I'll restore all the glory you had with me before you left. He, he's saying, now, Father, I, I have completed all the terms of the covenant. I'm going to the cross and it'll be finished. The work will be done. He said, I've, I have glorified thee on the earth. Verse 4. Look at verse 4 also. I have glorified thee on the earth. I've finished the covenant. I finished the work which thou gavest me to do. I have fulfilled all the terms. It's all done. Everything you asked me to do to bring about the redemption of mankind and to bring your body into one. It's done. Done. 
I finished it. He's saying, Father, you pledged in the covenant that we cut to bring me back to glory when I've accomplished everything you sent me to do. In verse 5, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. He said, I am coming in to my part of the deal. You made a deal with me, Father. You would bring me back to glory when my terms were fulfilled. They're fulfilled now, Father. I claim the terms of the covenant. Bring me back to glory. Read it. <laughs> now, Father, glorify me with thine own son, the glory I had with you before the world was. Oh, glory to God. Jesus stood up and claimed the covenant. Why shouldn't we? Jesus said to the Father, now I'm coming home, but now let's talk about what's going to happen to those that I leave behind. Let's talk about the covenant deal. Let's talk about the contract that we made for my seed that remains. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Now... I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. You know what he's saying? I am bringing them now into the covenant. The oneness has to do with being brought into the covenant. The Holy Ghost, the Father, Jesus, and you and me. He said, we're all one now. Father, I, I am bringing them into the covenant. It's all fulfilled. Everything is done. And you made an agreement that they, you would deal with my seed as you dealt with me. The same faithfulness that you gave to me, you give to them. Now, Father, I am bringing them all into the covenant. For I've given them the words which thou gavest me. They've received them. And I've known surely that I came out from thee and, it, and believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine and mine are thine. And they are mine. Thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. Verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition. Verse 13. And now come I to thee, these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Verse 15. I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil one. He's, that, that is the covenant cut between the father and his son. God says, I will keep you, my son, if you go. I will encourage you. Now, Jesus is saying, this I claim for my seed. You, you promised me that you would be faithful to my seed, to all my children. And now I claim, I come to the covenant on behalf of all my seed, all my children. Keep them from the wicked one. Sanctify them. Keep them holy. Keep them pure. Cause them to endure as you cause me. Well, folks, do you understand that we are now, by faith, under an everlasting oath by a God who cannot tell a lie? He cannot tell a lie. He made an oath to his own son. And his own son now is holding the father accountable to the covenant father. My seed, my seed. Before I go, my seed. Secure them. I kept them while I was here. Now I'm leaving. Now you're going to send the Holy Ghost. Send the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now here's a better part. 
Verse 23, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them, how? As thou hast loved me. Now listen, folks. If, if that doesn't get into your heart and bring peace and joy like you've never known, you know what he's saying? Because of the covenant, Father, this was what we agreed with from eternity, that when I'm gone, you know, I fulfilled all the terms of the contract, I know how you loved me. You were God to me and I was your son. Now I want the whole world to know that you loved them as much as you loved me. Just as much. Do you understand that God loves you by covenant right now as much as he loves his own son Jesus? Because you are in Christ. How can he? He loves the body. He loves the body. We are in the body of Christ. He loves you just as much as he loves his own son. Think of it. Try to comprehend. Are, are you loved next time the devil tells you that you're not going to make it, you're going to be a castaway, that you have sinned too much and you've gone too far and you can never get back and that you're unclean and you're unholy and you're no good and all these lies from the accusations of the devil, you stand up and you lay hold of the covenant and say, I'm under a contract with my heavenly father. Jesus co-signed it with his own blood. Oh yeah, he, he'll chase me. He'll spank me when I need it. Oh yes, and still the wages of sin are death. Oh yeah, you, you, you go out and fool around and you can get AIDS and you can die. But he said, my faithfulness will be with you. Keep reaching out to me and you trust in me. Confess your sins and repent. I'll be faithful to you because I've made a deal. I made a covenant. Think of it. To walk around the sin-cursed world. And so I know how much he loves his son. But he loves me the same. He loves me as he loves his. That's what Jesus said. I, it's in your Bible. It's not, I don't have a special one here. <laughs> Look at verse 23. Verse, read it out loud. Verse 23. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in love, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. There's even something even better. If it could ever get any better. This is verse 24. It's all the covenant. Father, I will. You know what he's doing? This is the will of the son. It was the will, his will, when he cut covenant with the father. He said, Father, as sure as you're bringing me to glory, you're going to covenant with me that you'll bring my seed to glory also. It's there, read it. Verse 24, why don't you read it out loud with me too? Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. All right, look at this. Now he's saying, for my will, it is my will, Father, that you bring them to glory. Hallelujah. Folks, you're going to glory. Are you in Christ? Yes. By faith? Yes. Do you understand that that's all God's been looking for all the time? He's not been looking for somebody trying to figure him out. He's not trying to get, find people, get it theologically straight. He's always been looking for heart, confidence in him and heart love. Out of the abundance of the heart to love him and trust him. And he cut this covenant so that we, there could be no question. He's trying to remove every, every question. It, it, it's as if God's saying, I, 
I'm going to treat you as though you had no faith, that you had no confidence, that you didn't even believe a thing in me. I'm going to make it so clear. I'm going to make such a strong oath and such a powerful covenant that you have to believe it. That you can't escape the simplicity and the love of your heavenly Father. Folks, there's a problem with that, and this I close, the majority of us have never come to grips with the fact that all these things, the cross, the suffering, and all that the Father has, has done, all the covenant, everything, was done because in spite, he did all this for us when we were at enmity with him. He did all this when we were sinners. He made these provisions. Now that you're his, now that you belong to him, why will you not trust it? Folks, I, by grace, I'm going to lay hold of the covenant. And every time the enemy comes at me with an accusation, with a lie, I say, devil, Jesus made a covenant with my father, and my father made a covenant with my Christ, that as long as I believe in him with all my heart, as long as I'm in love with him, as long as he is my Lord and I'm under his lordship, no way, devil, you can touch me. Oh, you can harass me, but you can't claim my soul. You may abuse my body, but you can't touch my salvation. I am secure in the Lord. And I'm on my way to glory. I'm coming home to glory. Hallelujah. Let's stand. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I would, everybody that loves Jesus, just raise your hands and thank him for this work that he has done. Lord, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you for the covenant. We thank you for this promise, everlasting, unbreakable, unchangeable. It's eternal, Lord. It cannot be broken. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Could you just quietly now, in your own way, thank God for his love for you? I don't care where you're at. I don't care what has happened. I don't care how discouraged you are. I don't care what kind of temptation that you've been through or anything else. I'm telling you now, you've got to be convinced no matter what I'm going through, no matter what my battle is, I am loved. I am loved. That's where you start. Once you know that you are secure in his love, once you know that God has pledged to keep you from falling, once you know that, then this great, there should be such a response of love. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You'll keep my commandments. Under the old covenant, it was obey or else. And it failed to bring a people to God. He said, I'm going to make a covenant of love. It's all of love. God's not mad at you. So, Brother Wilson, if you only knew what's in my heart. He made this covenant when you were a devil, full of hell, a rebel, an enmity with him. He sent Christ. He was always reconciled to you and me. He sent Christ to reconcile us to him. God was in Christ reconciling the world to him. He wants to heal so many hearts here tonight. You need healing because you've been trying so hard, so hard to love him. And you fall so short. You say, my love, just, it just doesn't make it because I, I think I serve him out of love and then something happens and I, I blow up, I lose my temper, I, I do crazy things. Yes, we're his children and some of us are spoiled. I think all of us are spoiled. We think the wrong thoughts. We say the wrong words. But he said, I'll tell you what, you let my Holy Spirit work in you and we'll get to all that. 
might be painful, but we're going to get to it. And God says, I have secured you that I may sanctify you. But until you know that you know that you know my father loves me, he's not mad at me. Will you get out of your seat if God's dealing with you, if you've been carrying a heavy burden, say, oh, I, 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 I just, I, I can't seem to shake away the fact that I have failed God. Now, if you have sinned in your life, you're living in open, flaunted sin, bring it to Jesus right now, repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I come to you by faith now. I come to the covenant. I come to the blood cleansing, the sprinkling of the blood. Jesus will wash it all away and bring you right into the covenant. Hallelujah. Up in the balcony, go to the stairs on either side. If something was said that was meant for you tonight, you're carrying a burden of sin or fear or guilt or condemnation. Bring it to this altar tonight and lay it down and say, Jesus, by faith, I come into your covenant right now. I come into your covenant. Jesus, you are my covenant. You're my covenant partner. And I believe you and I trust you. Come and bring your hurting heart. Bring your hurt. Upstairs, go to the stairs on either side and come down any aisle. I'll pray with you and let's believe the Lord for healing tonight. Bring it to Him. Step of faith now. There is no other way. It's by faith alone. Nothing else. Not by works. Not by any good thing. Not by your promises. By faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please Him. They that come to Him must believe that He is and He's a rewarder. And that reward is the covenant promises. The covenant promises of God is keeping, saving, healing power. Glory to God. Let faith arise in your heart. Will you come to him by faith right now? Pray in faith these words with me right now. All who come forward, Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your promises. And I come to you now in my weakness, my frailty, my helplessness. And I turn to you, Jesus, as the mediator of the covenant. I claim by simple faith, the covenant of the Lord Jesus. It's security, it's forgiveness, and it's power. Lord Jesus, now, I turn away from my own strength, from my own ideas, and I surrender now completely in confidence and faith in the faithfulness of God to keep his promise to me. Father, as sure as you kept your promise to Jesus, you're going to keep it to me. You made an oath. You made a promise. And I stand on that now. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I give you thanks. I give you thanks. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, Father, I pray for those that are standing here that may not understand. Lord, let there be a beam of light break through. Let, let something that was said tonight bring hope. Lord, if it was just one sentence or one paragraph, just one thing that was said tonight that opened up a ray of hope and strength to show your love into the hearts of those who feel unloved, those are, Lord, going through great struggles with guilt and with fear, afraid that all the time you may cut them off, living in fear that they may fall. Lord, take that fear away. You said, I'm going to be faithful to you. I'm going to stand by you. I'm going to keep you by my grace. And all I ask is that you come to me. Keep coming to me. Love me and trust me with all your heart. Trust me with your sins. Trust me for power over your sins through the Holy Ghost. And according to your faith, I'll reward you. As your faith is given to me, you will please me. You're not pleasing me by your struggles. You're not pleasing me by trying so hard. You please me by surrendering to my will, to my promises. I promise to keep you, the Lord says. I promise to keep you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's, uh, if, before you leave this service tonight, folks, and, and uh, 
what you're hearing more and more from the pastors in this pulpit is going to be more and more of life-strengthening help for you for the days ahead. And you may want to get those tapes and, and study the scriptures. And sometimes it's hard to get it the first time. But if you need to hear it three or four times until it becomes a part of your life, the Lord has to keep pounding it into me. You know, when you, you remember when you were in first, second, third grade, they, you were learning to write, you kept going over and over and over until you learned how to do it. And the Lord says, you just keep learning it and learning it, keep playing it over and over again until you get it, until you understand it. Doesn't come all at once. Don't be discouraged if you didn't understand what you heard completely tonight. The Lord will start opening it to your heart. Amen. Would you turn around and show the love of Jesus to at least 10, 12 people around you? Say, God love you. God bless you. Love you with everything in my heart. God be good to you.